Hey, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Sandbox channel. Today, we're going to be reviewing the TR6 Hazel 2. Is it pronounced as Hazel 2 or Hazel 2? I don't really know. So, we'll just go with Hazel this time. So, Hazel 2. For those of you that don't know, you can either buy this P Bandai or if you're someone that bought the very early TR6, the white version, Bandai gave you the expansion set for you to recreate this uh, variant right here. Um, all you have to do is just repaint your TR6 back to the dark purple color because that expansion set is dark purple and then the actual unit is white from my memory, yes. So today, finally, we are going to be reviewing the TR60 Hazel 2. It's been uh, it's been quite some time at my backlog there. Getting a little bit of dusty at the box right here. I just wipe it off. And yeah, AO set design. I always don't really understand the AO set design. They have like very unique design. Look at this. This is barely a feet. It's just like a pad. But anyway, AO set do have some very interesting and weird design. And personally, I didn't read the story too much, so I don't really understand the concept to uh, from TR1 to TR6. So, you know, I can't really do too much explanation right here. But, you know, this time I do want to talk about the box art right here. The box art, um, let's not talk about like the standing position right here, just the side right here. This is a really boring pose. It's just... Hazel 2 shooting at something. It's, it's really boring about this box art right here. But anyway, as usual, the side, there's nothing interesting. There's nothing surprising. So let's get straight to the runners. Now, as usual, let's take a look at the instruction menu. I don't know how many times I say about this, but the XG, the XG instruction menu for Premium Bandai is absolutely boring. Like, look at this, only contain the name and they don't give you any details. At least last time when I reviewed the second V, I remember clearly, at least they gave you the picture, but it's black and white anyway. And they gave you some detail about the mobile suit. And then they also give you the detail about the weapons. This one right here, they gave you nothing. Like it's really disappointing for every time when I open these kind of premium band knives. The instruction menu just don't have anything for me to look at. And it's just, it's just, it's just a menu like this. There's nothing interesting for me to look at. I really hope that Bandai one day, they can do something towards their high grade, uh, their high grade instruction menu. Make it a little bit more interesting if you, okay, simple as this. Copy what you did to the second V to every single high grade premium Bandai. Done. Okay, so now let's look at the crossing, the crosses, mainly focusing at the A1 and A2 runner. So, yeah, okay, I guess it's okay. So just quickly looking at the uh, instruction, the assemble process here. Okay, so here's the weapon. We have a stand as well, and then we have the mobile armor form. And then we also have a claw form, and then we have so, some like very minor markings. So first we have two wires for the claw mode and then we have a stand right here. We have a C1 and D runner. The D runner is for the head and the waist part right here. And then for the C1 runner, we have a lot of yellow parts right here. Uh, of course, the whole runner is yellow. Uh, it's mainly focusing on the on the torso, I think. Uh, the torso and then possibly some part of the back waist or the backpack. I don't really remember the design of it, so I might be wrong about this runner. We have three A runners. We have two A1 runners and then one A2 runners. Uh, honestly, I never built any TR6 design, so everything that I said about the, about the you know, runner's part uh, belong to which part is based on, my, based on my assumption. So clearly this is the head, this is the back waist, and then we have, and then the rest of it, I'm not really sure which is which. And same for the A1 right here. A1, we have two runners. They are pretty much like literally the same. So again, they contain parts that I don't really, and that I'm not really sure. This is the main weapon and this is the handpiece armor right here. The rest of it right here, I'm not really sure which part is which. We have E1 and E2. They are pretty identical. So I'll just take E1 as the uh, explanation right here. Right now, I'm just letting you to look at look at all these kind of parts right here and I'm just giving you a brief look. Honestly, I don't want to do any assumptions since I never built a TR6, so it's very hard for me to do assumptions. Next one right here is the F1 and F2 runner. So F1, F2 runner, pretty 
pretty surprising they are in different colors so f1 right here uh some small assumption will be like this is the main weapon this is probably part of the claw and then this will probably be part of the backpack and that's basically the f1 and then for the f2 right here honestly i don't really know but based on what my uh based on what i saw at the instruction menu my guess is the shield and the and the backpack and then part of the backpack my assumption we have b2 and two b1 runners wow this time tr6 runners is really weird they have like they have like duplicate same runners so they are pretty much the same so i'll just take b1 uh take out two okay so b1 right here so you can see that a lot of in the frames i don't know which part is which it's very hard for me to judge so again just letting you have a look we have two c2 runners they are exactly the same i think this part right here will be the head and then this one right here i think is the part of the legs i think i don't really know of course we have the poly caps right here and we also have some marking decals and then we also have a lot of stickers and a lot of them is long stickers so i'm starting to getting a little bit worrying about the color separation of this high grade right here since for a new mode this is a pretty huge amount of stickers so anyway let's not talk too much let's go to the review first hey guys welcome back to the review of the tr6 hazel 2 so this is the finish of the hazel 2 hazel 2 is not like the design of the traditional gundam is it doesn't look like a human shape anymore it have its own style right here as you can see it got its own style right here but you know for a person who always build the uc series ce series double o series we're not always kept building this kind of series over and over and over and over again sometimes this kind of unique design still gave me that freshness right here so you know when this design when i first time saw this design i'm not a fan of it i think it's really weird but right now i'm seeing the product right here and i've seen the finish right here i think it looks great and uh, i think it looks really unique because you know, as I said, I saw too much same design, same structure, same style over and over again. Sometimes this kind of unique, unique design like the TR6 right here will give me freshness. Right now, I can't really fit the whole TR6 Hazel 2 in the frame because the backpack, the shield booster, uh, well, actually, the, I don't know, is it called a shield booster? The shield booster uh, at the back right here is really long and it's very hard for me to fit in frame because I put on the booster right here. The TR6 cannot stand by itself anymore because uh, I will show you later. The feet is not really a feet, so it's very hard to stand by itself. So that's why this is there's a stand right here, of course. So I just want to quickly apologize for not cannot fit the whole Hazel 2 into the frame because the backpack is way too long. But anyway, let's not talk too much. Let's go through the details first. Let's take a look at the leftover parts right here. This premium man, I don't really have that much leftover parts. So for example, B2, we only have one part right here. I don't know, is this the adapter or connector? And then for the A2 part right here, we have the original TR6 back skirt armor. And the rest here, I'm not really sure which part. And then for the A1 run, A1 runner right here, we only have like two pieces that got left out. And which again, I'm not really sure which part it is. So the leftovers on this premium man die is it's pretty little it's not that much as usual we're gonna start with the head first so of course the camera at the front and the back right here is stickers and then for the articulation move up move down and move around is very free uh, there's absolutely no interruption so the head movement is really nice but for the tr6 because of its settings right here you can't really see the eyes of the gundam so you know, some people may not like this, but I'm pretty fine because as I said, it's a unique design. Let's look at the chest right here. So the chest right here is a really small chest, I gotta say that. Uh, and it doesn't really look like the traditional Gundam chest that we always see is buffed or is uh, regular scale. This one right here is really small. And for the articulation right here, there's not much articulation because of the design of the uh, of the mobile suit right here. The articulation at the torso right here is not really good uh, but it can move front and back for a little bit as well side to side not really because the armor is getting in the way let's take a look at the arms right here so the arms design is different this time it's really small it's really small arms right here and then we also have a different mechanic at the joints for the arms because tr6 
uh, is able to transform. So the model design have to, you know, take care of the transformation. So this time the, the arms articulation is not going to be as good. I move out the booster so I can show you the articulation better because I don't want to keep bumping into the booster. So I can't show you any articulation. But once the booster is kind of like uh, sticking to the arms right here, the articulation will get affected. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So first one right here, we have this small piece right here going along at the arms right here. It got a separate movement right here. The arms can move front and back as well. It can lift up at a pretty good angle. The bending though, unfortunately, is not really good. It's around like 90 degrees, not even 90 degrees. So uh, the bending of the arms is not really that good moving 360 now is um now it's possible but once you once you put the booster on the back the uh, rotate 360 part is not really possible because the booster is getting it away and for the and for the hand down here uh it got a separate joint that you can allow to move your hands furthermore and we also have the weapon holding hand for you to choose as well so now let's look at the waist and the legs if you want to call these legs because it doesn't really look like a traditional legs but um i kind of like this kind of unique design so first the front waist right here you can move a little bit this part right here is a sticker um because it comes with a red piece and there's a little bit of yellow at the at the symbol right here but it didn't give us separate parts so it's stickers so first kicking to the front is absolutely amazing look at this it's absolutely amazing before kicking to the front kicking to the back is 90 degrees and then the whole and then the whole bending of the legs right here because it have to take care of the transformation mechanics so the whole leg can be fold and then kicking to the side is 90 degrees straight and we also have an extra joint here for you to bend the legs right here also for those of you who are wondering where the feet is this is the feet i don't know uh, what would you call this but i think this is the closest thing as the tr6 feet so this is the feet uh you can um is you can usually flip it out or store it back because the tr6 don't really have a feet design you know so we only have like a small flat pad right here serve as a feed judging from that very small piece right here we obviously can tell it cannot hold that much weight on the tr6 right now let's take a look at the back right here so connecting the long uh long rifle blade is that how you call that weapon but the, anyway the shield booster thing right here so first uh, it's actually connected to the back skirt right here, so that's why there's a little bit movement right here. And then I'm just going to take this off because it's too long and it's very hard for me to show it. So this is the blade, the long blade rifle or long rifle blade. I forgot what, what the name is. And at the side of the blade right here is all stickers. It's a very long stickers that go with it. So personally, I'm not a fan of it, but it's very small color separation right here. So if you don't mind you have two options so you can either paint it yourself or you can just you know just ignore that sticker because in my opinion the color doesn't look really that different anyway so now looking at this so this scope right here you you can flip it out and then you know put it back again like this and then the rest of the part right here we don't really have that much movement except for this base right here before we go to the transformation part i would like to tell you about the accessory first so first one right here we have the beam rival this rival right here you have to repaint the whole rival because the rifle is supposed to be black and these parts right here this kind of line parts right here supposed to be gray and this cable right here is yellow so you need to repaint the whole rival and then the shield right here it's a pretty simple shield i don't think you need to do any recoloring on this shield i just have to remove the booster right there because the booster is really getting in the way and it's very hard for me to show you how to put on the shield so to put on the shield is pretty simple you need to remove the hand first and then you need to push in the part and there you go this is how you put on the shield now let's do the transformation first so first you need to remove the backpack i already did and then you know you need to rip off the arms and then remove the whole torso And you also have to remove this small part right here at the torso. Now, let's get to some transforming. So first, we need to pull out this part. Then we need to pull out the blade right here. And then we'll put it to this new piece right here. So you should have something like this. And now remember that this piece that we just pull out, we need to rotate it and then put it back again. So you should have something like this. So this part, 
uh, originally is this is facing this way now we need to face it out and then for the blade right here we'll stick it at the back of the booster right here so you should have something like this but it's it's pretty loose for some reason so you know again you can do something about this for the arms transformation you just move the hand like this and then you just fold it you just fold the arm and then you just turn the shoulder to the other way and that's how you transform the arm to connect the arms we need another piece right here but when you take a look close look to this piece right here it's just hazel to his head and then you know hiding inside the chest right here unfortunately uh it's an xg so it can't recreate that mechanic right there so they gave you another separate piece but right now all you have to do is just connect the arms back onto this piece right here so now that's what you will have for the legs it's even more simple just fold the legs like this yeah it's really simple and then you just have to need another piece right here and then just find this spot right here and then just put it in there you go the f the legs transformation is done and for the waist armor right here just rotate the back waist to uh face it up and then now put your torso part and your arms part on it and then you just need to adjust the whole transformation like this and then now you need to expand the legs just like this expand the legs like this and make sure this uh, u shape right here is facing down there's the hole we connected you should have something like this and now just put back the booster the last step right here we need to flip out this small part right here and then borrow this small piece right here and then clip it in and then slide in the rifle like this and then move it back up and now this is what it looks like after you transform the whole hazel tube right here honestly the transformation i'm not really a fan of it because the upper body part transformation is a little bit complicated and is the and the instruction is pretty unclear as well in the instruction menu so it's a bit hard for me to find the spot and then you know do it correctly but this is basically what it looks like once you done the ma form just like the Sailor gundam once you transform to into ma mode all your left is this poor torso right here and um yeah that's basically how you transform to ma mode but gotta be honest this ma mode looks really nice and i and i actually like this design this ma mode looks really nice the booster actually have another way for you to mess around is the claw mode so what essentially is the um the booster back right here it will extend and then form a claw but personally before i'm forming the claw i just want to give you a couple warnings is that during the transformation part do you remember that the blade gun supposed to be you know in storage at the back of the booster um that part right there will actually damage the sticker on the blade and my sticker right now is a little bit off it's a little bit loose now so um my recommendation is the long blade at the booster right here i suggest you you can either repaint it yourself or don't put on the stickers because for i've assumed that for a couple times you play with the transformation then the stickers will just peel off so again i'm just telling you that don't put on the stickers if you if you will play with the complex consistently and transform it consistently so first the booster can use as a separate handheld weapon all it takes is to remove the bottom piece of the booster and now you should have like a very hollow part right here so now what you have to do is just flip out the handle right here and then you just put on this new part right here and then snap it at the bottom of it and now you can use it as a separate weapon like this now i'm going to show you how to form the claw mode so first you need to remove the blade at the at the front of the booster then you need to remove the closed claw at the side right here then you rotate the thrusted facing down originally is facing front now you want it facing down then remove this piece right here at the top of the new piece and then just adjust the position like this and then now we will need to use this new piece right here is the open claw piece right here unfortunately we cannot just open the parts and then just use it as a claw you have to do some part swapping 
So what you have to do now is just remove these two pieces right here and then just put it back onto the open claw. Once you put on the parts and then you just snap it back in. So now you should have something like this. Lastly, we'll just slap on this little piece right here at the back of the claw and put on the action base. For this part that we just adjust, you put a wire at the bottom of the new piece right here and then you just snap onto the shoulders. But I do want to say that it felt really weird because there's a very, there's a very annoying gap between the shoulder and this new piece right here and it just doesn't look really comfortable so again apologies for not fitting the whole thing in the frame but this is basically what it looks like after you deploy the claw and then you have the piece on the hazel too personally it looks pretty good but i think the wire is too short for posing so maybe you can get a longer wire and then you can have a better experience all right guys thank you guys for watching this tr6 hazel 2 review i will just end the video right here so the only fight in the ointment for this uh hazel 2 right here i think is the blade gun at the booster i wish they could give us the part separation instead of those long stickers because after you play with like one or two times with the transformation part i think your stickers would just peel off it or or broken so again uh, i strongly suggest you don't put it on if you're lazy or if you can repaint that part just repaint that part don't use the stickers the stickers will just peel off and it doesn't look really good again this is a very unique gundam design so for people who are pretty tired of building the same type of structure i.e like uc series ce series for people who are tired of uh, building those series or same style again and again and again uh, i strongly suggest you to get a tr6 to enjoy it because uh, it would def it would definitely give you the freshness all right i'm just gonna close the video right here thank you guys for watching uh, make sure you subscribe and hit a little bell next to the subscribe button so you can get notified whenever i upload a new video and i'll definitely see you guys in the next review goodbye